Hey everybody, sorry for the jinky OPS. So first patch back from holiday break. So it's a bit more focused on polish and balance updates as we look ahead to 2024. We hope you are as excited as we are. Balance updates, card updates. Now these are some mutants that are involved here, so I'm going to read some of these out. This Loki one I'm quite interested on. Old oh, Armavia, replace your hand with cards from your opponent's starting deck. Give them minus one cost. New on reveal, transform your hand into cards from your opponent's starting deck and give them minus one cost. This sounds like it's the same thing, they just reworded it. Loki has been a force since release, fueling a new archetype that dominated the metagame for a solid stretch. Loki stro shrugged off our OTA nerf to 4 or 5. It was a small hit, but probably about half as effective as we'd hoped. We need another patch to implement a second change, so we took the time to play with some fairly different changes and monitor the metagame. As December began, we even saw Loki, Bolter, Darkhawk bounce, and Destroy were all winning the matchup conceivingly. Blob Thanos shook things up a bit, and Loki was able to squeak back into the, the mix on top. Once we saw that, we decided to soften our approach rather than pursuing a larger rework. This adjustment will remove the collector's role as a massive source of power for Loki decks. Oh, that's why they reworded it. Oh. The winningest card of all time in Loki decks has rarely actually been Loki. It was usually the collector. Yeah, that's what I saw. That's actually fairly surprising because drawing the Collector earlier is much better than later when compared to Loki. Many more loser Collectors are in the data. This change will be a be good for the Collector long term because future patches will be able to balance the Collector around its strength in other decks without the burden of Loki's glorious purpose. So yeah, this way... I actually still fought a Collector deck. It, I did beat it though. But I really got Collector 2. Now, yes. This had to happen. Wait, that's what Miss Marvel meant by unique? Adjacent locations where your cards have unique costs of plus 5. That's what it meant by this. It meant... No cards that have the same cost. Oh... Well, they made that very unclear. You could just say cards that don't have the same cost, plus 5 power. Yeah, this first one of the most working cards. New, 4-4. Four, four. Ongoing. Your adjacent locations with plus 2 cards and no repeated costs have plus 5. They made it clay clarified. This was the biggest problem with the whole game. And, and I would say card game history. But luckily, they fixed that. They made it clear on what she does ongoing. So this can be stolen. This can be stopped by Enchantress, Echo. Um, stuff like that. that the, the zone that stops ongoing effects. Whatever that was called. I can't think of it. I almost don't see it. Your adjacent locations with plus two cards. So it can't just be a one card nonsense to just instantly beat Professor X for no reason. Uh, so you need two plus cards and no repeated costs. No repeated costs have plus five. So it's talking about costs there. No repeated costs. So you can't have like two twos. You won't get your plus five. At least that finally explains what, what Miss um, Marvel, Kamala Khan, was actually doing. Because there's also a variant of Captain Marvel called Miss Marvel. So to clarify. But yeah, Kamala Khan, that explains what she was doing here. Also, oh, base name card, Miss Marvel. Developer notes. This is a small change in scope, but we expect it to have a meaningful impact. But yeah, this is huge. This is huge, because now it explains this card. Now if it's overpowered, at least it's overpowered. And, but at least people can understand why it's overpowered. We released Miss Marvel without requiring two cards in adjacent locations, in part because we found it difficult to clearly commu communicate the effect when it had multiple conditions. However... Something we learned from players was that, for many of them, the default assumption was that two cards would be necessary anyway. Because we also weren't psyched about how well 
Miss Marvel synergized with Professor X. Yeah, it was like they nerfed Professor X and they make him stronger than ever with Miss Marvel. But then they just nerf all Professor X's, so please restore Professor X back to his original power. At least with other X-Men around. Like, yeah, you just need a special X-Men or game mode, which hopefully the new game mode coming out will be faction, all 12 of the same, at least type, like, Asgardian, um, Avenger, Shield, X-Gene, stuff like that. Spider-Verse. This change captures better gameplay while shaving off a bit of the strength. Even though we adjusted the words, the card is otherwise the same as before. You just need two cards at an adjacent location instead of one. Yeah, at least they're explaining what she does now. This at least remotely explains it. Your adjacent locations with plus two cards and no repeated costs have plus five power. Way clearer. Especially for how quickly and concisely it can be read. Yeah, you can do that easily within a minute and still do your turn. As long as you can read well. I like that. That's really good. This is actually hugely game changing. This is massive. I don't have her to sort of to show off. I don't have Loki either to show off. I don't have a Nihilus either here. I have Dracula. I can show you Dracula. Um, that kind of makes me want to play my discard deck again with this Dracula buff. Oh, an Angel. Oh, I'm definitely going to show you Angel. Um, Angel may actually return to one of my decks. Possibly. With him actually being buffed like that. Because that's always how it should have been. It's so frustrating to have had him that way. But anyway, we're going to head for ourselves. It's a Nihilus' turn. It was 5-7. Whoa, this is a huge nerf. He went to 5-6 Armville. Your cards with power below zero. Switch his sides. Destroy those that can't. Below now. It's not zero or less. Developer notes, even though internal playtests successfully found most of Nihilus decks were seen on top of metagame, yeah, they are crazy strong, their performance was surprising, in particular the strength of just playing a Nihilus with Sentry or Hood decks with no other synergies have been very good. Wow, that's what people are doing, that's brutal. During design, we widened Nihilus's condition to include zero in part because we were worried it wouldn't be strong enough for restricted to just tight set of targets, but clearly that's sufficiently strong. Given that's the case, we're re restoring our preferred design that required cards to have negative power and taking a little base power away from Anihilus. That might seem heavy, but Anihilus has been one of the most significant outliners in our card performance data for weeks now at every level of play. Even more surprising, Anihilus was performing better in most of our competitive samples than anyone else. Usually strength flattens up there. Yeah, they're just shocked at how well he performed. Now, he was awesome in the Selene deck. I'll use any excuse to show off the oldest mutant Selene here. Actually, this is show that her in this deck. It's just faster. But yeah, Selene here was really good because she gives a card minus three. Now, if you have zero cost, you, they can still go to minus three with Selene, and you can still play them with a Nihilus. So I do think that will still maybe be played, but she wasn't necessary. That's really brutal. But that's what it seemed like in the higher up ones. I was just getting very hard for me to fight those Nihilus decks. You have to play it just right and prevent them from moving your cards. Which is, you just fill his own before he plays a Nihilus. So you can't take the downside, or you have something they can throw it back at him or something. It's, it's hard to mess with, though. It is hard to mess with. Anyway, Dracula, at the end of the game, discard a card from your hand. This has its power. Or one, at the end of the game, discard a card from your hand to gain its power. That seems very similar. Developer notes, we're still monitoring the discard deck's performance in the wake of losing Mecha Chavez, and one of the most damaged by that change was Dracula. In addition to his minor buff, reworking Dracula this way makes his text more clear and provides us with additional balance knobs to buff or nerf him as necessary in the future. We like having more dials to turn. To gain its power. Interesting. I wonder the word gain there instead of has. Let's get interesting. Anyway, here's Angel. When one of your cards is destroyed, this flies out of your deck to replace it. 
New one two. When one of your cards is destroyed, this flies out of your deck to replace it. Place out of your hand or deck, replace it. Yeah, see, they finally added the hand or deck. This was so obvious. How did this take two years? Two years, I definitely freaking mentioned this in my videos. I may have legit sent in a complaint, actually, for, on this one. Oh, balance change recommendation. Angel still seems totally unplayable, but I did actually see him, and I hadn't seen him in freaking forever. So Angel may legitimately be a thing now. In a destroy deck. Which we may just add him into immediately. Let me look here. Developer notes, hey, we did it. This change has been in the queue for a while. But we've delayed it to ensure we could implement and test the VFX. Angel's a card we give to players early, so we wanted to be sure we weren't breaking a charming piece of that new player experience. What? I this, that was just silly. Their explanation there is silly. Let's look at Dracula and Angel. Well, Angel, I'm going to have to look up. Here he is. Now, he may have special sound effects, so I'm going to add him to a deck, actually. I'm not going to play it now, but I may play it tomorrow just to see. This should be down here. Let's get a brotherhood, here we go. Oh yeah, see, I have Deadpool in X-23 now. You don't really need Angel in this lineup. I could add him, though. We're gonna take out Sabertooth? I feel like that's not good. See, I still have the question. We could take out Sinister, actually. If someone dies, will Angel come down and be eaten again? I don't know. She will be. I want to just add on another mutant here, but yeah, that would break our chain though. Because yeah, these four are the chain. I could just ditch death though. But I think it's technically Sinister that could go now. Well, Sinister is such a great play. X23 is kind of questionable, and like Negasonic is also questionable. But I'm just gonna go more X Men if I can. Let's just try it. Mr. Sinister is one of my all time favorite villains, though. Legit. It's like him and Man Bat are right up, right up there. Let's just try this. Let's just see what Angel can do. See if there's a special effect. So I'll probably just take him out and put him back in or something. Because, yeah, he does it. He's not gonna give us a bonus. Like, there can be advantages to having Mr. Sinister because the ability can trigger twice and. Um, oh my goodness, I still have not part of Bossed. Oh, that I need to try to make a deck for at some point. But I may just continue this X-Men climb, I don't know. See how, see how far they can climb, these are my favorite, favorite cards. Now let's look at Dracula, should just already be in my Apple Rise Again deck. Yeah, he's got one power now. Very cool. Now let's keep going in a steep dive. Now, Kingpin's almost unplayable, so they're changing Kingpin. When a card moves here on turn 6, destroy it. 2, 3, when an enemy card moves here, afflict it with minus 2. Well, why are they ditching all this destroy stuff? What the heck? I guess that makes Spider-Man 2099 more special. But when an enemy card moves here, afflict it with minus 2. Oh, I see, because this can be done at any time. Oh, he's so good with Hercules now. He's so good with Hercules now. Now, he, this is actually worth considering now. So that's this cool pirate him. 2-3, yeah. He's completely changed of a card. Completely changed. But he was, like, unplayable before the 3-4. There's just a very particular time that the meta with Juggernaut worked. Let's see, see what the devs have to say. One of the few remaining loose ends in our change to the move mechanic during the last patch was that Kingpin and Frisk Tower remained able to destroy cards thanks to Juggernaut. It's always been a source of confusion for some players regardless of the outcome, and Kingpin's weak enough that a rework was worth pursuing. This change makes the interaction with Juggernaut match existing expectations because we consistently don't let Unrevealed cards have their power modified by other effects. 
we also made the effect asymmetrical and tried out an aggressive set of numbers to see if we could convince players to consider pairing Kingpin with Polaris or Spider-Man, in addition to being a tech card against cards like Phoenix and Silk. Another side of this change, as it adds good ways to adjust Kingpin via OTA and find the perfect spot. Interesting. This is just a little word chase thing. This is a non-functional text update. Yeah, that's not anything with America Chavez. Bugfix, Bugfix, after you play a card here in similar effects. Wait, what is this? This should affect... What is this about? We have a handful of non-intuitive interactions around after you play triggers for complicated coding reasons. The most prominent has been Angela, who would receive her power when a card that was played to her location but we're feeling a different one thanks to something like Juggernaut. This doesn't match intuitive intuition around other uses of the card play, which typically care about where card finishes um, resolving, such as Death's Domain. But if she worked the right way, in that case, it would mean working the wrong way. With the stuff like Spider-Man, she would not get the buff from Spider-Man after he moves away, so either way, something would be Unintuitively. Unintuitive, I think is what they meant. To act unintuitively. Oh, I see. They said act. To solve that, we implemented a new functionality in this patch that allows us to track where a card began to reveal rather than where it finished revealing. That means effects like the two above work more intuitively. Now, Juggernaut will stop unreveal cards from buffing Angela and she'll now be able to get buffed by Spider-Man, even though he moves away before resolving. This is also going to fix a few of the bugs we've had with Luke's bar, as cards that got bounced sometimes became untrackable for other triggers. In the vast majority of cases, this change won't affect your gameplay experience at all. It really did only matter for a few corner cases, however, we're, proving, we're providing the list of cards located with slightly behavior yeah, we're a list of cards and locations that have slightly different behavior now below. Oh, I've been doing this for a little too long, it's getting tricky. Angela, Ty Titania, Silk, also Bloodstone, Nick Sonic Warhead, so there's the mutant. Werewolf by Night, Echo, and Lockjaw. Locations, Alter Death, yeah, these are just locations, I can read them all. But there's Luke's Bar on my all-time favorite ones. Location updates. Fisera old. When a card moves to destroy it, this was huge. I was killing stuff with Polaris and Magneto all the time. This actually gave some chance to my Magneto deck and my X-Men deck. And now it's new. When a card moves to reflect it with minus four. It's just minus four power now. That would make me lose so many scenarios. It's crazy. That's one of the few trickeries that the X-Men deck could do with Magneto. But apparently that's unfair. They think. Developer notes. All... Of the notes for Kingpin above basically apply here. We still want a location that plays spoiler to movement, but without the confusing elements created by occasionally destroying unrevealed cards. I don't get that. I don't know why they made that change, but they did. Here's just the issues. Is there one that you're just stuck? Looks like I got an issue here. We're just stuck in a constantly connecting screen. No, they're not showing that. It's possible it's in here. I'm not seeing it though. I have to look this up because I encountered a new bug that should have been fixed, but it was still there. My opponent was constantly connecting, so it's forced me to actually do a, do a only retreat if they retreat. Which I hate to do, but I was literally stuck infinitely. I waited like 5 plus minutes. I'm going to edit it out of the main freaking video.
But I'm not seeing it in here. Look at this bug. This is insane. The bug report. That's possible what he did to me right there. Was it? No, that wasn't a conquest match, though. Like DC Dual Force levels of bugs. It's not good. The bugs are clearly piling up. There's PC known issues. I am on PC. I'm just speed reading through this stuff. If you're going faster than the mouse. No, I don't see it in here. Anyway, love this change to Angel. This Kingpin change sounds interesting too. Um, that really plays great into Hercules, that's really cool. But I guess, I'm guessing that thing Hercules was a little too powerful, so they changed it. But I'm guessing there, because like, when, it, when I was a move deck, I would almost always lose if that zone popped up that destroyed your cards. I did win a few times with it around, I just played around it. Um, but yeah, I'm guessing that's also why they changed that, because it did, it did kind of make it hard to have consistency as a move deck. But anyway, I need to figure out some kind of boss thing. They're kind of cool boss buffed up Selene. That's probably a way to do a deck like that, but it just sucks to have to discard a deck to do that deck. I don't really want to do that. But yeah, I'm curious to see if there's a sound effect for Angel down here. So I guess we'll see. Do I have an Angel avatar? I don't think I do. No, I've seen other people with it though. No, I don't have that. We'll keep it swing through there. I like your Morris character too. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes. But anyway, thanks for watching. You can like some do all that stuff, but you don't have to do it. Do any of that stuff at all. Although I greatly appreciate it. What did you guys think about the changes? I think they're probably for the best. And finally, after so many, so many years, they fixed this. I can't believe this took more than one month to fix. Seriously. Like, I would have fixed this instantly. I can't believe it took them that long. Basically when it's probably too little too late. But no, uh, what do you guys think? I'll still play it. I still enjoy it. But yes, yeah, nowhere near as good as it used to be. And my poor X-Men deck is weaker by the second. Anyway, stay mutant and strong. You can like some do all that stuff. I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate it to help this little channel grow and battle the YouTube algorithm. Anyway, later. Pause the video do it now. Stay marvelous.